Guys, welcome to Fright Fest. Thank you so much. Uh, first time for both of you guys? It mm-hmm. is, it Amazing. is. How, how has it been so far? I mean, this morning, uh, Hell is well, um, this, this morning, Hell is Where the Home is played on that giant screen across the square. What was that like for you guys? Yeah, it was incredible. It was just, you know, seeing it for the first time, basically, with a live audience on yeah. that massive screen. It's incredible. It's, you know, it's what you, what you live for. So it was great. Amazing. So for people that, uh, watching this who don't know about the film yet, Austin, give me a little bit of the setup of the story, what's, what the film is about. Um, it's two couples go on a romantic getaway and things go to hell. Uh, <laughs> and that's all they need to know. That's all they need to know. It's, it's, you know it's, uh, it definitely is misdirects you and t- takes you one direction and then goes a totally different and, and drops a machete on your head. It absolutely does. Yeah, yeah it's wonderful. Where, where, where did the sort of origins of this story, where did the ideas come from? Um, it came from, actually I was presented, I've always wanted to do a home invasion film mm. and I love horror. And the producers, Julian and Diego, are my friends and I had shown them my last movie. And they had the script, and we just all kind of collaborated with it all together, and uh, we worked on it for a while, yeah. all of us together. Zach was the first one cast in the in the movie, and I mean we rehearsed for a while. We did a, a lot time, of about a month and a half, two months before. Yeah, and we spent a while just kind of like working out characters who they are because we wanted it to have. I think what differentiates is it has a dramatic side to it as well. Yeah, it's not just about jump scares, you know. Totally. Yeah, and it must be great for you, Zach, because you, you feel like these. These core sort of four characters had a lot of stuff going on, totally. aside from the horror. Almost, totally, you know? and that was something that, like you said, we really worked to kind of build because you see in a lot of horror films and thrillers that it's kind of straight up by the book and this is what happens. But as the actor, you want to be able to find that nuance and find those characters within the story and then have all of the crazy stuff happen on top of that. And I think we really succeeded in this. It was cool. Yeah, definitely. Is that something that's important to you with, with horror, you know, to sort of have that those characters that you can be attached to? Yeah, I mean, I think horror gives a lot of leeway to in one way because if you know there's a lot of horror film where the acting kind of goes by the wayside and there's amazing horror like that's fine but i'm really attracted to using horror as a device to get into drama Mm -hmm. and get into the act let the actors act in that world and then bring the violence and let it feel a little more organic to their their characters Absolutely. Zach, tell me a, bit, a little bit about your character then. Who yeah, so my character is Joseph. He uh, brings his wife basically to this getaway to kind of work on their relationship. They just went through something traumatic between each other, and so we thought this would be a good thing to kind of let the let it breathe a while and, and get out and kind of reconnect. Little does he know that there's a lot of things around the corner that don't really allow that to happen. So he has to uh, he has to deal with inner demons and outer. Uh, Problems, let's say. <laughs> How the demons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of grueling stuff that these characters go through sure. uh, throughout the film. What was that like to shoot? You know, how was that for you? It was, uh, it was pretty intense. You know, the good thing about it is we shot in chronological order. And so, mm-hmm. you know, as an actor, it allows you to kind of build that, you know, uh, trajectory throughout. But once it got to the, the pretty intense scenes, it it seemed real. I was I was scared for my life at times. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty impressive, and you know some great amounts of gore in this as well. Again, was that kind of was was a lot of it sort of practical effects? And oh, things? almost all of it. We used very little VFX in this film. Only some cleanup stuff. It's almost all actual. And is that something that you wanted personally, just you know, to, to, to do, or was it you know just for sort of um, is it easier budgetary reasons? No, it's it's actually it's probably more expensive. We had it. A great team, Josh and Sierra Russell. They've done Beyond the Gates. They did Low Life, so they're really talented. I think they have an amazing future as VF, as a practical effects artist. And they, I was really important to me that we did it practically because yeah. those are the films I love. I come from that '70s, '80s love of horror, even early '90s work was all almost stuff that was done on on set. So we just took those tricks and we applied them to this film, you know. And I think. Uh, I think it it give, it works. You know, it, it was it was a task for sure, but I think they work really well. There's so much there's something so much more kind of tactile and, and effective about it, isn't there? I think um, it feels yeah. like people are really kind of embracing that again at the moment. And why do you think that is? I mean, it feels like we're going back to the kind of old ways of practical effects in eighties and seventies. So it looks style. better. Mm. It's like it's not computer generated. It's like, it's like it takes so much money and time and talent to make a good computer generated effect. I think, you know, we've also hit this point where like there's a little bit of nostalgia for it. And I don't know, I think it's exactly, it's tactile, you can touch it, it's in front of you, it feels visceral. Yeah. Um, and for me, it just makes all the difference. When I see fake blood, it, 
like a VF uh, CGI blood, it drives me insane in a film. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Zach, what about, are you a horror fan? Like, what's your sort of relationship like with the horror? I am. I really do enjoy horror films. I, my type of thing is more of like a you know Friday the Thirteenth, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and that type of vibe. Yeah. Um, but I enjoy it. I feel like as I've gotten older, I, I get a little softer and get more scared, but I still enjoy it every once in a while. <laughs> Definitely. Also, do you think that we're, you know, what, 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 what are your thoughts on the sort of horror, mainstream horror that we're getting at the moment compared to sort of it's the movies r- when you were growing up? It's really good. I mean, I thought this year you've already seen good examples of it, but like Hereditary. Um, I know I'm missing some of There's been great. I mean, yeah, I've seen, a quiet, I've seen s- and- a quiet Place. I've seen so many good horror films on the, uh, at different festivals this year. I'm really taken aback by how good it is. I think it's, I think you know, especially for us uh, in America right now, we're dealing with kind of an ins- insane shift in everything. I guess you're dealing here in London as well. And I think it's a way that a lot of people are responding to the political and social climate and shift. And I even brought that, and I felt like into this film where I definitely had, I felt like there was a level of using violence to kind of understand where everything was going. Um, I think people are reacting in that way with horror and they're using it with a lot of subtext to kind of discuss the, you know. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that actually because you've got in the in the film, you know, there are there are moments when characters talk about things like border crosses and things like that. I mean, was that something that you were consciously thinking about when when sort of you know that sort of subtext? Hundred percent. I mean, I think that was a big uh, I, a big part of it was that we wanted to discuss. I mean, you know, in the background in the subtext, there are jokes about border crossing and all that type of stuff, and that there is this whole world of people moving in and out and the nomadic world and the boundaries that are basically made up by governments to keep people in control. And we use that to create paranoia and fear and the film's a lot about paranoia and fear. Brilliant. What were the sort of challenges for you, Orson, in sort of the biggest challenges in sort of making this film, shooting it all in this house? Um, I mean, one thing that, and I did this with a lot of research before, and is like, how do you make one location interesting and fresh? Yeah. And I really felt like, you know, and how do you block, blocking it out was a lot because you have four, at least four people in every scene, if not more. So we're always trying to figure out a way to make it a little more dynamic, a little more, make the coverage not too standard. And so that was a big thing, a, a big uh, challenge to me was like, I can't let this just be boring and other people stuck in a house and everyone, we all collab, it was very collaborative with all of us. So we all worked hard to like figure out a way to give an energy and let it flow.